NBA free agency is right around the corner. So the question is for the Chicago Bulls, how much salary cap space do the Bulls have to spend in free agency? I'm going to be breaking all of that down for you guys and more. What is going on, y'all? Fast Sports Talk back at it with another video talking, of course, some NBA here to talk about the Chicago Bulls. So if you're a Bulls fan, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button down below, people. Make sure you're following me on all my social media platforms. I got you covered with the Bulls like a blanket, so you don't want to miss out, all right? So with that being said, people, you see the question right above me, right? We got the whiteboard here. It's time for a little whiteboard session. So everyone's wondering, you know, if I free agency is here, we want the Bulls to sign a couple of players. How much salary cap space do they have? Well, I'm glad you asked. So here we go. So the salary cap space, and in case you guys don't know what a salary cap is, it's basically a limit on how much teams can spend before they start getting taxed for the amount. So this is what helps keep the league have having that competitive balance, right? If uh, if big market teams like the Lakers or, or the um, Celtics or the Heat are able to just spend a lot more than small market teams like OKC, uh, then that would be an unfair advantage. The salary cap space is a limit for every team in the NBA where basically, hey, this is the limit you can have for spending on your team, right? And if you go over this limit, you pay a penalty, which is a luxury tax. Or you can go over it, but there's penalties. So how much uh, cap space do the Bulls have this summer? Well, this is how much cap space the Bulls have. That's right, that's a big fat zero because the Bulls are over the salary cap and they're over by quite a lot, all right? Um, I've seen, you know, the numbers here, but somewhere between 43 to 49 million dollars is approximately how much the bulls are over right and again i was looking for exact numbers here but it's, it's around this range okay so they're significantly over the salary cap so basically what i'm trying to tell you is the bulls don't have money to spend in free agency but there's always a but here there are things that uh the nba has which allows teams that are over the salary cap to be able to still add players, and those are exceptions, all right? So there are two exceptions that the NBA allows teams that are over the salary cap to have, and that is the MLE and the BAE, all right? That is, yes, BAE. Uh, MLE stands for mid-level exception, and the BAE stands for biannual exception, okay? And both of these amounts differ based off of where you are in terms of the salary cap. Now, let's just break this down for you guys, okay? The Chicago Bulls, like I said, they're approximately 40 uh, to $49 million over the cap. Once you add Zach Levine back to the roster, right? You add Zach Levine back to the roster, you add the salary for, uh, you know, the rookie that we added, Dale and Terry, the guys that have player options, if they exercise it, like, for instance, Tony Bradley, etc., guys like that. You add all that up, and that brings the Bulls to about, you know, somewhere around that 100 below. Well, it's actually below this $150 million mark. And this $150 million mark is the luxury tax mark. Okay. If you are above this, then that is bad because you have to pay. A penalty if you are below this you're fine all right so this is different than the other one that i was telling you about which is this is the 122 million this is the salary cap limit right so the bulls are over the salary cap but they're under the luxury tax okay and if that makes sense i know it's it's a, it gets a little confusing here but all you need to know is this all right the bulls are over the salary cap and after they add all these uh, salaries with Zach Levine and then all of their, you know, if you add all these numbers up, they will be a little below the luxury tax. Now, they could be over this, they could, but for now, I'm projecting them to be a little under, which basically means they will have the ability to use some of these exceptions. The mid level exception is worth about $10 million. So you can offer a player a $10 million per year contract. That is significant, folks, because teams that don't have salary cap space, if it wasn't for these exceptions, you would basically only be able to offer minimum contracts. Any team in the league can offer minimum contracts uh, no matter what their salary cap situation is. 
The other one, the biannual exception, this is a, like, uh, I think $4 million a year. But I don't believe the Bulls have access to this this year because of the fact that I believe they used some of it or all of it on Trish and Thompson this past season. And you're only allowed to use this every two years. So if the Bulls already used it last season, then they can't use it this season, all right? Again, um, there's a chance maybe we have some of it. I don't know if we used all of it. But from what I've seen, I don't believe we'll have access to this. That means we will have this mid-level exception, which is this $10 million. All right, and that uh, is what we are going to basically have in free agency. All right, we're basically going to be able to add either one quality level player. Maybe he's a uh, definitely going to be a role player or a backup, uh, but there's a chance it could be a starter, right? Or you split this up with two or potentially three players. All right, and that would be again four or five million dollars uh, per player. So. That is basically the salary cap situation for the Bulls because, again, they don't have salary cap space. And, yes, could they clear it out? Yeah, but that would mean no Zach Levine, and that's not going to happen. The Bulls want Zach Levine back. So you um, take all of the, the numbers when the Bulls are um, over the salary cap, and then you add Zach Levine. You add all of the players that might re-sign with the, with the Bulls, and you're going to obviously be over the salary cap and be under luxury deaths. Now, one last thing here. If the Bulls still end up over this luxury tax mark, this mid-level exception goes down from about $10 million to $6 million, okay? That's a penalty because the NBA does not want you over this luxury tax. Again, they're trying to keep the competitive balance. So either the Bulls will have a $10 million mid-level exception or a $6 million mid-level exception based off of if they're over this luxury tax mark or not of $150 million. I'm projecting them slightly under when all the numbers are crunched, but we will see. So overall, folks, let me go ahead and just erase this for you guys so you can kind of understand here what the situation is like. Going into free agency, we want to talk about all of these big names, right? Bradley Beal, obviously Zach Levine's there, and talk about, hey, I want the Bulls to sign this, that, the Bulls will basically just have the mid-level exception, which is going to be, like I said, either $10 million or $6 million, all right? And that is basically all they're going to have to spend in free agency. And this, like I mentioned, is either going to be one really good quality player or two to three decent players. I'm projecting the Bulls to probably get one quality level player that they use the full mid-level exception on. Obviously, we know we need front court help. We need rim protection. Let's see what happens. But as far as the salary cap space, the answer is zero. And can they spend anything in free agency? Yes, they can. They will be able to spend the mid-level exception. So hopefully that answers the question for you guys. Let me know, guys, if you have any other questions down below. I'll make some videos on it as always. Thanks for watching.